Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am Danny Sheriff, your HA recovery coach and BAM certified practitioner. I am talking today about caffeine. Nine times out of 10, you are going to hear me recommend a reduction in your coffee or your caffeine intake for getting your period back or improving your cycle parameters. Like if you're not ovulating, if your follicular phase is too long, if your luteal phase is too short, if any of these little things are happening with your period, I'm gonna recommend a reduction in coffee or caffeine. And that's really hard to do. Disclaimer, I love coffee. I drink coffee all the time. It's not easy to stop drinking it <laughs> for a lot of people. And I even used to have my own coffee shop in Sydney and here in Austin, I even you know daydream about opening another one. So to tell people stop drinking coffee for your own good uh, is actually really hard. So I'm allowed to talk about this. So I wanna explain why we make this recommendation. Okay, before we can dive into like how caffeine works and what's happening, I want you to understand that stress is such a huge role in recovery. So much of our work is about that, right? Yes, calories in and calories out is playing a role because it's a stressor in many ways. Emotional stress, physical stress, these all matter. And these are, you know, stress is occurring up here in the hypothalamus, right, in the brain. And reason for that being, is that cortisol is actually in charge. It is a top tier hormone here. Now in this space, we talk a lot about estrogen, progesterone, PSH, testosterone, LH, FSH. And I will often get new clients or just random people like send me their numbers, their labs for those things. And first of all, I don't need to see those things because if you have HA, I already know that they're all low. But yes, there are some things that we do to you know try and improve estrogen or progesterone, but Honestly, at the end of the day, like we need to deal with cortisol. And when our cortisol is good, when our stress response is good, our reproductive hormones follow. So we need to stop putting our reproductive hormones at the top of the hierarchy with our focus. And we need to bring it back to stress. We need to bring it back to cortisol. So caffeine is a low hanging fruit and it's often a big part of what the problem is for us. So let's talk about caffeine. Caffeine looks like an inhibitory neurotransmitter called adenosine. That is a naturally occurring thing in our brain and it's a part of what um, you know, wakes us up in the morning and it keeps us feeling this like state of energy and naturally it starts to decline throughout the day, which is a part of how and why we go to sleep, why we wake up in the morning, why we go to sleep at night. Now caffeine, it mimics it a bit. It looks like it and it binds to it stopping it from being able to do its job. So its job is to open up these cells and you know decline throughout the day. And every time you have caffeine, you bind to it and you spike it back up. So a part of as well, how that works and why we feel good when we drink coffee is because it constricts the blood vessels a bit. So that's just a the functional piece there. And it's making us feel good. It's giving us energy. And so we're popping, caffeine like it's hot even while you're at rest like while i'm sitting here there's nothing stressful happening if i'm having a cup of coffee i'm hyping my brain up and allowing it to feel like there's actually some kind of emergency or something worth spiking adrenaline for in the room as we can imagine while we're at rest all of the time if we're always doing that at what point are we actually genuinely at rest when are we actually allowing our adrenals our brain, our body, our everything to actually relax. Constant caffeine consumption is affecting this. So some people will also feel as though they're adapted to caffeine, right? I drink it, I don't feel much of a response. Although you may not be having the uplifting or, or hyperactive or adrenaline spiking result, you're, you're still getting the stress response result happening behind the scenes, which is a part of why, you know, it's always harder for us to take action on something that we can't see or, or feel it happening. So when your body is in a constant state of adrenaline, right, always up, we're always in some way spiking our cortisol up a little bit, this is gonna increase issues like inflammation, anxiety, depression. There's links to cardiovascular problems. It's going to suppress your immune system and it also spikes insulin resistance. So you'll also hear me and many other practitioners talk a lot about, okay, when you do drink coffee, you still shouldn't do it on an empty stomach, right? You should probably not be drinking coffee first thing in the morning. Why? Because food in your system helps 
not to spike insulin, which helps not to spike cortisol. It's balancing your blood sugar. So your reaction, your body's response to the caffeine is actually a lot more subtle if you have food in your system. When we eat in the morning, when we break the fast, we naturally reduce that, that naturally rising cortisol. So by eating, you're helping to kind of slow down and level out that response. And so naturally, of course, eating before you have your caffeine intake is also going to help. Now I'm talking a lot of crap on caffeine. So just wanna also point out like the pros, right? And those pros are also visible when you're able to go back to exercise too. Increase motivation, enhance performance. It helps to increase testosterone levels. So it's not like caffeine's all bad. It's just that during recovery, it is not a useful tool and it's probably inhibiting your ability to make progress. So a common question that I get is, uh, is decaf okay? Sure, you know, there's pros and cons to decaf as well in terms of like the processing and the quality of it. If you're not getting it from a really, really respected source, you could try black tea. So I drank uh, tea with milk, English breakfast tea. I drank that through recovery. And so I was still having some type of caffeine technically, but I wasn't drinking coffee. And if you are one of those people who feels like, oh, I can't go to the bathroom in the morning without coffee. Like I need it to kind of wake my body up. That's actually also not necessarily true. And what you could just do instead is have a tea or a glass of warm water and lemon, something like that. That still has been shown to move the bowel. And I think that we're all just so used to drinking coffee first thing in the morning that we think that that's having this extremely pivotal role in our ability to have a bowel movement, but no, it won't. And you shouldn't need to rely on caffeine either to have a bowel movement. So if that's you, let's work on that as well while we're in recovery because having healthy bowel movements is also a sign of health. So here's the takeaways. Cortisol is really, really one of the most important things. Make sure when you do return to, or to drinking coffee that you're eating food first. Use it as a tool, don't abuse it, right? It's great for times when you need to focus or if you need to get up really early for something or if you were trying to enhance performance. And if you're in recovery right now, you know, I know it's hard for many of us, but caffeine is not helping you. And for so many people, especially those who have had a recovery period, but have suboptimal parameters like a short luteal phase or an, an ovulation, give quitting coffee, cold turkey, a shot. You won't regret it. You're going to see improvements. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Thanks very much. Please subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys next week.